everyone. Seems like everything's working. So welcome to my talk uh, about uh, OCR 2.0. Um, and hopefully I can provide you a little bit with an under the hood look as well of uh, what has changed with OCR 2.0 compared with its predecessor, OCR 1. Uh, this is based on joint work with these awesome folks. Uh, so shout out to them because without their contribution, none of this would be possible. Um, so yeah. Maybe a natural starting point is to dive into a review of what off-chain reporting protocol 1.0, OCR1, uh, was uh, or is. Um, and then from there, we can look at the improvements and evolution uh, we've made towards OCR2. Um, so OCR1 was specifically designed for powering our data feeds on EVM chains. That is to say, Ethereum-like blockchains. Um, and it's been successful at that. It's been running very reliably and securely for the past one and a half years. Uh, it secures, or the data feeds powered by it, secure uh, $20 billion of value, um, according to data.chain.link. Uh, we've written 4.2 billion data points on chain, um, and we have more than 1,000 feeds launched uh, with OCR1. Um, so if you look at this plot here, um, then you see that since uh, yeah, beginning of 2021, uh, where we had something like 300 uh, data feeds, we have more than tripled uh, the number of, of networks launched here. Um, and it's also a, a cornerstone for the, for the DeFi ecosystem. So uh, major DeFi uh, protocols such as Aave, Compound, Synthetix, uh, rely for their security on these data feeds powered by OCR1. Um, so maybe as a, as a good intro now, let me explain to you OCR1 in a nutshell. Um, so OCR1 is ultimately a distributed system uh, where we have uh, as major components the oracles, uh, of which the decentralized oracle network, the DAWN, is comprised here. Um, we have um, the blockchain on which uh, the smart contract that they write data to is running, and then we have some data sources that they observe. And the goal of the system is to reliably and securely report periodically the price, for example, of some asset like Ether, um, so that it's accessible to customers running on the blockchain over here. Um, we try to do as much work as possible off-chain here, as the name off-chain reporting suggests. Um, and that's good for efficiency, that's also good for liability. Um, because ultimately, after all of this work is done off-chain here in this part of the slide, uh, we only need to send a single transaction uh, with a report signed by a quorum of the oracles in the dawn to the contract running on-chain. And so by minimizing the, the on-chain interactions here, uh, first of all, we can save cost because transaction fees are the dominant uh, cost factor in these systems. But we can also improve reliability because, for example, if there is congestion on the blockchain that the smart contract is running on, uh, then we do not uh, need every oracle to be able to send transactions in. As long as a single oracle is able to get a transaction in, the system keeps on functioning. Um, so let me briefly walk you through how the protocol works. Um, so as a first step, we have the Dawn here, um, which will make observations uh, of some data sources. So every oracle will observe an independent a data source here, uh, in this example, they then get prices $9, $10, $11 back from the data sources. Uh, they then run the protocol um, which uh, medianizes, the, so they communicate the observations to each other, and then the observations are medianized into a uh, single report that at the end of the protocol run, every oracle here has. And that report is signed by a quorum of oracles. Uh, this report is then transmitted to the contract running on the chain, and then the contract, in turn, makes it available to customers like Synthetix and Co. Um, the contract will validate the signatures on the report. Uh, so we, we have, at this point, assurance uh, that the Don uh, indeed uh, observed uh, these, these prices here that the report is based on. Um, and in terms of security, this is, uh, this is a strong system because we are operating for the, for the distributed systems folks here in a, a Byzantine fault tolerant setting, which is to say that we can tolerate um, a subset of the nodes in the dawn to exhibit arbitrary faults. So that could even include them having been you know, compromised by some adversary or them being malicious. Um, 
and, and still the overall system will function correctly. So that's it for, for OCR1. Hopefully you have an you know, overview roughly over, over how that works. Um, but what I want to emphasize here, right, OCR1 was specifically designed for powering data feeds on EVM chains. And in the past two years, the ecosystem has evolved and has moved on. Um, so today we live in a multi-chain world. Chainlink is live on 15 chains. Some of these are EVM chains. Uh, some of these are L2s. Uh, and then we have you know, completely new blockchain designs like Solana. Um, so we, we need to nowadays be able to target a heterogeneous environment of chains, not just EVM chains. Chainlink also has evolved and has many products, right? So there's not just data feeds, but there's proof of reserve, VRF, automation, CCIP, and so on and so forth. And so given this new world, the goal is to generalize, to enable all products to benefit from what OCR1 provides. Uh, and so OCR2 is really a shared foundation um, for these different products. Um, so we want to be able to provide the security and reliability of OCR1 data feeds, but across the board. Um, and a nice benefit of that is also that if I make any improvements to the foundation, now everything that's built on top of the foundation will benefit from that. It also makes sense from a technical perspective, because if you look at the technical details of what all of these products require, they all face shared challenges. Uh, so they, they are all in of security, they all need um, a whole bunch of cryptography to make sure that things are signed and verified correctly. Um, they all need to be configured consistently so that all the oracles in a DAWN uh, share a configuration. Um, they all need to be monitored so that if any issues arise, they can be caught and remediated quickly. Uh, the oracles in the DAWN need to communicate with one another over a secure peer-to-peer -peer network. Uh, ultimately, we need to transmit uh, these reports that are being generated here to a contract running on a blockchain, and so on and so forth. And so the, the mechanism by, by which we achieve this um, is through something we call reporting plugins. Uh, so reporting plugins um, provide the product-specific logic that's executed uh, by the OCR2 framework uh, running on the Dawn. Um, and, and perhaps a useful analogy here is MapReduce. So MapReduce is a big data programming model that abstracts away the complexity of running some kind of big data computation on a distributed cluster. Um, and similarly, OCR2 uh, seeks to provide a programming model that abstracts away the complexity of running computation on a Dawn. Uh, what this looks like specifically, well, here's a, here's a code example. Um, so this is the, the Go code um, of what the reporting plugin interface looks like. I've highlighted a few parts that I want to focus on here, so don't worry about all of this extra stuff. But the, the main points I want to focus on are, first of all, it's an interface, so there can be different implementations of that interface that correspond to the business logic of the different products. Um, the logic that's defined in this reporting plugin will be executed on all of the oracles in the DAWN running an OCR2 protocol instance. Um, the observation method um, defines uh, logic that returns an observation. So that would have corresponded to observing the prices in the OCR1 example we saw earlier. Um, and then the report logic uh, describes how we can take a list of attributed observations, that is to say observations where we know what oracle uh, observed what observation and aggregate, synthesize that into a report, which will then in turn be you know, signed by a quorum of oracles as part of the OCR2 framework and transmitted to the contract running on chain. And so to, to make this more concrete, I want to show you two examples of how we can implement these you know, crucial observation and report methods to cover completely different use cases with the same framework, with the same foundation. So here we have the data feed example again, which uh, should remind you very much of the uh, slide I showed for OCR1 in a nutshell. Um, but now we have observation and report as kind of modular components. We've modularized the architecture. And so now observation here uh, happens to be some uh, function in the reporting plugin that you know, fetches here a price from the data sources. And report uh, is a function that takes in these observations, medianizes them, and generates a report based on them. So nothing too new so far, but now what's interesting is that I can also express the logic required for completely different products uh, using the same framework. 
Uh, so here I'm looking at a sort of a toy example of what CCIP, the cross-chain interoperability protocol, might look like. Uh, and what I, what I see here is that I, I have a contract uh, running on a blockchain X that wants to send a message, which is denoted by this little blue box, over to a contract running on a blockchain Y. Um, and again, I can express this uh, as part of uh, this reporting plugin uh, interface, and I can then run it on a DON. Uh, using OCR2. Uh, so here my observation function would consist of the oracles in the DAWN observing what message the contract uh, on the blockchain X wants to send. Uh, you know, it might have emitted an event with that message. Uh, and my report function um, will consider each observation of a message by one of the oracles in the DAWN, a vote for that message indeed having been occurred. And I can now count how many votes are there for a given message. And if the number of votes for a message exceeds some threshold, then I can assume that indeed that message happened um, because a sufficient number of oracles in the dawn observed it happening. Uh, and now I can again transmit it to the contract running on the destination chain. So again, I just have an observation and a report function, you know, similar to the price feed example I, I showed before. Uh, but now I can express very different logic here. And you know, similar things apply for automation, uh, apply for VRF, and so on and so forth, where I have different products, but I can express them in this framework and abstract away a lot of the complexity of the oracles and the DAWN communicating with one another, communicating with the blockchain, et cetera. So what's, what's appealing about this, if I, if I return to what I said initially, that OCR1 was designed to power data feeds on EVM chains is that now with OCR2, I can have kind of almost arbitrary products that I can express in the form of this reporting plugin interface, target almost arbitrary chains that you know, I can integrate with, uh, with the corresponding uh, interfaces for blockchain integration in OCR2. And this is very nice in terms of scaling many, many products to many chains, because now instead of having to redevelop each product anew for each chain, uh, I instead can have one reporting plugin uh, for one product that I can then have interface with, with many chains by switching out the blockchain integration. Similarly, if I already have a blockchain integration for some chain and I want to launch a new product on it, uh, I can just develop the reporting plugin for it, but I don't need to develop the whole rest of the logic here. Uh, and this is indeed something we, we have running in practice. So for example, um, for, for our data feeds, we have a reporting plugin that, that powers those, um, and we have different integrations we can plug in there. So we have an EVM integration, which works for chains like Ethereum. And we also have a Solana integration. Uh, and indeed, if you look at the Chainlink data feeds that are live on Solana today, uh, they, they use exactly this concept. So the, the reporting plugin for the data feeds uh, on Solana is the same one as for the data feeds uh, on EVM chains. We've also uh, had the opportunity to make a number of under the hood improvements with OCR2. Um, which I, I briefly want to allude to here. So first of all, we've managed to, through further engineering and protocol improvements, reduce gas cost, uh, which is, of course, economically appealing. So, so we've reduced the cost by roughly 25% compared to OCR1. Uh, we have a completely new peer-to-peer -peer networking stack, which is uh, built from the ground up for liability and security, and which is based on the industry standard TLS 1.3. Uh, and then finally, um, we have, through modifications to the protocol design, lowered latency and increased throughput. The protocol is now responsive, which is to say that it's only um, bounded basically by the performance of the underlying network, how low the latency between the oracles is, and uh, by the throughput of the blockchain that's being targeted. So assuming that both of those are uh, sufficiently you know, good, I can in principle um, transmit multiple reports per second, for example, update a data feed multiple times per second uh, on a target blockchain. Yeah, um, if you want to learn more about OCR 2.0, I encourage you to stay tuned for the OCR 2 paper. Um, and I encourage you to attend some further talks at SmartCon. So we have a talk on automation, uh, which is one of the products uh, using OCR 2 uh, today, later in Descartes. And then we have a talk on CCIP tomorrow in Aristotle. With that, I want to thank you for your attention. And uh, yeah, I hope that you saw uh, how with OCR2 we can take the benefits of OCR1 but apply them to a broad range of products 
and also apply them to products targeting many different heterogeneous blockchains. Thanks a lot.